AI technology has been absolutely rocketing into the mainstream stratosphere as of late. Now your average everyday Joe just kind of knows that AI is a thing and that it exists and that it's new technology. Sure, they might not know as much as, you know, us weirdo AI tech people, but it's definitely becoming more mainstream, especially with the release of ChatGPT. I think that was the kind of big rocketing factor saying, hey, there's this free AI tool you can use and it has a ton of capabilities. I also think that AI art played a role into this whole mainstream stratosphere thing, but it really was ChatGPT that disrupted pretty much every business out there. Like, hey, these tasks that we couldn't automate before, now we can automate them. There was this crazy story where these Amazon employees used ChatGPT to 10x their efficiency, and word on the street was that they were actually submitting a confidential Amazon code into ChatGPT. Anyways, with the rise of the ever-popular ChatGPT and all its fantastic capabilities, there has been some arising fear on, hey, did AI write that or did you actually write that yourself? AI content detectors have been popping up on little websites here and there. There's a lot of word around, you know, are they accurate? Do they work well? Should people who use AI regularly be worried about their AI content popping up as, oh, this is AI generated, it's not legitimate? Well, we're going to discuss all of that today because it is pretty clear cut and dry on where we are at with this stuff at the moment. If you follow the breadcrumb trail, it's pretty obvious that some sort of AI detector would pop up at some point. And to be clear here, we're talking about text AI, like ChatGPT, GPT-3 text generators. AI image detectors actually kind of have their own pre-baked in AI content detectors where you can just tell if an image was AI generated. And honestly, I think that we can all agree, you should know, you deserve to know whether an image was AI generated or not. But with the text side of things, it's much easier to manipulate text. So here is the big news story. OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT and behind GPT-3 actually introduced and released their own AI classifier for indicating AI written text. So they're launching this classifier and it's basically just trained to say, all right, is this body of text human written or AI written? There are a lot of complexities that come with detecting whether or something is AI generated or human generated. Keep in mind as we go through all of this today, you never really know for sure whether some text was written by AI or not. When you think about it, a human could type all of the words, string them together perfectly, just as an AI might. So trying to tell for sure whether something was AI written is kind of futile at the end of the day, but I do understand why OpenAI is creating this technology. So first things first, they've trained this classifier that distinguishes human text and AI written text. So they have a bunch of human text somewhere that they've evaluated and decided this is what human text looks like. And they've taken a bunch of AI text and evaluated it and said, this is what a bunch of AI text looks like. So they know what the differences are between the two. And of course there are blurry lines and it all kind of combines together because it is just text. They even mentioned what I was talking about earlier. It's impossible to reliably detect all AI written text, but they do believe that good enough classifiers can inform mitigations for false claims that AI generated text was written by a human. So there is some certainty to it. A great example that they provide, I think that we can all agree is something that's not good is automated misinformation campaigns. You know, no one wants misinformation spreading around. So what I love about this is that they do mention their classifier is not fully reliable. When they're actually testing it out and challenging this thing, it can correctly identify 26% of AI written text. So that means the rest of the percentage, 74%, it can't identify whether or not it's AI written correctly. But it only incorrectly labels human written text 9% of the time. 9% of human written text you paste into this thing is going to be detected as AI generated. But the classifier does get better as the length of whatever you're pasting in increases. So like short bodies of text don't really work well at all with these classifiers. And you'll see that with not just OpenAI's classifier. The proof really is in the pudding with this one because you'll see 
with OpenAI's classifier, it has a minimum of a thousand words to test it out with, which means that these other classifiers where you can paste, you know, a sentence in, it's not very accurate at all. And like I just said, this thing is publicly available to test out and use. You can test out your own AI generated or written bodies of text to see what it thinks. They do mention it should not be used as a primary decision making tool. Human written text can be incorrectly but confidently labeled as AI generated. Text that is like extremely predictable obviously can't be reliably identified. For example, if I said list all the digits of pi, you could go find a human written article on that somewhere, but the AI could also write out all the digits of pi for you. So it's easy to just edit AI written text to completely bypass these classifiers. If you just do a little bit of editing and a little bit of tweaking, these things are completely bypassed. If you actually base these classifiers on AI or neural networks themselves, they're actually known to be pretty poorly calibrated outside of their training data. Anyways, let's take a look at this classifier itself. So you simply just paste the body of text in here, minimum of thousand words, and we'll go ahead and have ChatGPT here write us an essay. Write a 1,100 word essay about how much you absolutely love and are obsessed with bugs. We'll make it interesting. It has no problem turning this thing out for us, that's for sure. One thing I like about this example here where we, you know, say write an essay about how obsessed you are with bugs is that's a very human thing and I feel like that's harder for these classifiers to detect is something like, oh, I, I love bugs versus a Wikipedia style article about trigonometry or something weird like that. So it completes our essay here. It's very long, I must say, and it's a whole 1,100 word essay about bugs. So we'll paste that in here and we are above the 1,000 word limit, which is good. And we'll submit this and see. Well, at the very least, we know that this is AI generated, but the classifier considers the text to be unclear if it's AI generated or not. It has no idea. And this was clearly straight up just generated with ChatGPT. So Clearly, prompting matters an absolute ton on whether this classifier is going to be able to detect your AI-generated text or not. So now let's have ChatGPT do an 1,000-word essay about Benjamin Franklin. This is something that's a lot more predictable. All right, so again, no problem giving us a nice Benjamin Franklin essay. And we'll paste that in here. What does the classifier think? Again, this is fully AI generated, mind you. It considers it to be unlikely AI generated. Well, would you look at that? That's just the basic Benjamin Franklin essay spat out by ChatGPT, and it says that it's unlikely to be AI generated. Definitely not a very reliable classifier at all, considering everything it's gotten so far has been AI generated. Let's see what it thinks about something like a Wikipedia article. I'm very interested. So this is the Wikipedia page for SpongeBob SquarePants. All right, what does it think about Wikipedia? Again, unlikely AI generated. So this one technically was correct. It, it knows that it's unlikely AI generated. It's not AI generated. Let's do another essay here. In a thousand words, explain how the physics of a steam engine work. We're trying to make this as mathy and boring as possible. Okay, so it looks like ChatGPT kind of ran out of talking space here. It, it just ended with the word is. It didn't even finish its sentence. So we're just going to copy everything else and paste it in. All right, what do you think, classifier? Likely AI generated. Finally, it's close to being correct. The classifier thinks the text is likely AI generated, uh, but it doesn't know for sure. I've seen the very likely a few times, and sometimes, yes, it does work, but clearly it is super unreliable and should not be used in any sense to detect whether or not someone has generated something with AI. Now, as I stated earlier, this is not the only AI detector out there. However, this is probably the best ones considering the other ones don't even have word limits. And we know that these classifiers don't really work that well on less than a thousand words. And also, this one is created by OpenAI, the company that literally made the AI that started this whole classifier movement anyways. So they know better than anyone what their models are capable of. But let's take a look at some of the other ones. So we've got this one right here. This is originality.ai, plagiarism checker and AI detector built for serious content publishers. And again, they're using a credit system here, a cent per credit. One credit scans 100 words. So they're already trying to charge this and they do make a note. It's not for academia, which I like to see, but they're saying it's for web publishers. And I guess this is so you can check your own stuff. Like if, if you're the owner of a publishing company, 
I still don't think that they are reliable enough, and I'm not going to show you guys this one. I'm going to show you two other ones when I've seen other people test this originality AI one. It's no better than the other one, so don't bother paying for it because you can get the same thing for free. And I guess this is like to prevent your team from writing AI content. Definitely not for academia because that would be more unsettling. So this is like an implementation of OpenAI's GPT-3, but they also have this AI content detector. Let's start pasting text in and see what our detection score is. So we'll start off with our Steam Engine 1. They have a character limit of 1,500 characters, and this is 3,700. Now that I think of it, I'm pretty sure OpenAI's detector is 1,000 characters, not 1,000 words. Yes, it is 1,000 characters, so I'll make that correction there. It's 1,000 characters, not 1,000 words. But this one has a limit on the amount of characters. I think it's better to test this stuff on longer form content anyways, like I've already been testing, because that's really what we're talking about here is these essays or these long articles that you'll see on websites and stuff like that. That's what people are really worried about. 1,310 characters out of 1,500. Analyze our Steam Engine text. It's 6% human generated. And there's Saying that you should edit your text until there's less AI detectable content. So this one was actually pretty accurate, which we like to see. That's pretty good. It knew, you know, maybe a, about the same as OpenAI. It's kind of hard to distinguish these things because OpenAI just said it's likely AI generated, but they were both right in the same sense on this one. All right, here's our Benjamin Franklin text. We'll analyze it. 20% human generated. Okay, so it thinks that the Benjamin Franklin stuff's a little bit better. Same result that we got with OpenAI. It thought the Benjamin Franklin stuff was a little bit more human. But still, notice how this said 20% before it said 6%. They're both AI generated. So it really doesn't know with much accuracy. And we'll go back in here and paste our bug essay in and see what it thinks about our bug essay. Oh, oh, the bug essay is 100% human generated. Would you look at that? Not, not AI generated at all. Yeah, clearly these AI detectors are not very <laughs> reliable. It's like, fantastic, you did a great job. Not, yeah, I mean, it's they're all AI generated, so, and they all got different results, which means they're just straight up unreliable, like OpenAI was talking about. I understand why OpenAI is doing the research into the detectors and, and stuff like that, but again, these should not be used as reliable checkers for whether or not someone generated content with AI. Oh, it's maybe it's because the bugs was cut off. Let's analyze it again. I just noticed that the, the beginning here, the B was cut off. Oh, no, it's it still thinks it's 100% human generated content. So uh, the bug story was enough to just completely fool this one. The, notice how it says it's 100% human generated, where OpenAI said that it's likely not AI generated. They're a little bit more like, hey, it's, it's human generated. You're good to go, where OpenAI is saying, you know, we don't really know for sure. So that's where these detectors are going wrong. You know, why your intentions might be good, you have to let people know how inaccurate these things really are. So this one is the content at scale one. This one's completely free to try out as well. So let's give it a shot. Again, let's start off with our Steam Engine one and we'll check it for AI content. Ah, oh, obviously AI here. It says that it's obviously AI generated, which is true. Fully AI generated content here. So yeah, this is the same result again that we just saw with the open AI detector and the previous detector we just tested out. All right, now we're going to try out our Benjamin Franklin essay here and see if it thinks it's AI generated. And this one also thinks that the Benjamin Franklin one is obviously AI generated. So yeah, that's actually co completely correct. It actually got this one correct. All right, let's see what it thinks about the bug essay. And okay, the bug essay, we got a 5%. So it thinks the bug essay is a little bit less generated, but honestly, this AI detector right here has been the most accurate out of all of them and it has been more accurate than OpenAI's own detector. So that's really something interesting to point out here. It thinks that all three of these are obviously AI. What I'm interested in seeing is what happens if I take out like most of the bug essay and then fill the middle of this thing with Benjamin Franklin essay. And at the end here, we'll toss in our steam engine stuff. What does it think about that? Oh, it still thinks it's obviously AI. That's very, very interesting. So this content at scale AI detector has been the most reliable today out of the ones we tested. Again, this is very limited testing, so take it with a grain of salt. However, I still have noticed with this one, if you go through the AI content that you generated and change few words around, change sentences, tweak stuff a little bit here and there, which if you're going to be using AI to help write stuff is the way you should be doing it. You shouldn't just generate stuff with AI and then upload it. You should be going through it, looking at it, learning from it, and when you do that, 
this thing completely says it's human generated. So this one clearly, in my opinion, seems to be the best one out of the bunch. Let's try it on the SpongeBob Wikipedia article. 100% uh, human generated. So that's actually 100% correct. What do you think about SpongeBob Writer 1? And the writer one also thinks this one's human generated, so that's correct. So yeah, guys, like I said, you really don't have to worry with these AI content generators. Anyone worth their salt that's evaluating writing is not going to be using these yet. They're just not good enough at detecting AI generated content at the moment. And like I said before, if you're going to be using you know, these tools correctly, if you're going to be using ChatGPT or GPT-3 to be writing content, the way you should be doing it is using it to help you get ideas for structuring things. And even when you're using it to actually write whole paragraphs, you should go back through those paragraphs, see in ways in which you could reword things better, which that's personally something I've noticed when I use OpenAI to write stuff. Going through it, you actually notice ways that it can be written better. The AI isn't just perfect at writing everything all the time. You can see good ways in which it writes and say, oh wait, I think I can make that even better. Or that gives me a new idea of how I can reword this or re-explain this better or what I can talk about next. So you should use it as a tool to help you write better instead of just letting it do all the work. Because if you're just letting it do all the work, you're not actually saying anything. You're you're invalid in what in what you're doing. I guess the context I'm talking about would be more academic stuff. Or if you're writing articles as well, you know, you don't want to say you're writing an article with the, when the AI actually did it. But for stuff like code, you know, that's that's a completely different story. I don't know how coders would feel about that, but I think it's probably fine if the code works good enough and you understand how the code works. You know, just paste it in there. Why not? I don't know, it's a very complex topic and there's a lot to talk about with it. So tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And yeah, we should also continue the discussion in my Discord server, which is linked down below. A lot of people in my Discord server have been talking about these AI content detectors lately. I thought they were important to talk about. So that's why we covered it in today's video. But thank you so much for watching. I'm at Video Productions and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Goodbye.